ओके सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर स्पेसिफिकली द रिकॉर्डिंग डेट आई अपलोडेड आई एक्चुअली डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द फ्यू वेरी बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू प्रोबेबिलिटी एंड आई एक्चुअली थॉट की वी शुड स्टार्ट विथ सम बेसिक थिंग एंड देन मूव टू द एडवांस कॉन्सेप्ट कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड लाइक रैंडम वेरिएबल्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशंस एंड एंड सम कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू यू नो लाइक एडवांस प्रोबेबिलिटी लाइक बेस थ्योरम एंड एवरीथिंग सो दीज थिंग्स आर गोइंग टू बी देयर एंड इफ यू सी द क्वेश्चन पेपर फ्रॉम द last year also i thought i i saw that there is a questions of gamma distribution and uh, thing is that you know like these type of questions will not be from the very advanced concept and uh, but if you know the basics if you know how to uh, utilize those basic concept actually you will able to solve the questions okay so uh, if we just start with the probability you know like uh, there is actually two definitions of probability one is called classical definition and uh, there is some other definition also you know like uh, when uh, you will uh, uh, study probability in uh, especially in iits and uh, when you go to your masters actually there is some uh, definitions called you know like uh, it is defined basis of uh, omega f and p so you know like these are the different uh, things that we need to define a probability but these uh, uh, definitions are very, very much advanced and it does not need for your current uh, syllabus okay so we will not just go into this detail just we'll see with the you know like the definitions that we have been knowing till now okay so uh, for those for those definitions to come true actually you know there is something called sample space and sample space simple thing whenever you conduct an experiment and whatever the possible outcome outcomes of those experiment are those are called a sample space so let's say you are tossing a coin so tossing a coin either can result into uh, a head or tail so these things can be represented in a set and this is called a sample space if you are tossing two coin then uh, the result the uh, the result can be represented in the same way and uh, and you can just uh, list all those outcomes also in the set and these things are called uh, sample space okay so sample space simply means that whatever experiment you are conducting whatever experiment you are conducting uh, whatever the possible outcomes of those experiment are okay pos all possible outcomes so these all possible outcomes is called sample space and actually you know when you conduct such experiment statistical experiment understanding the sample space is very much important because let's say you are given a questions of probability and it may happen that you know like uh, the way the way you need understand the sample space is actually wrong so you know like when you just uh, you are not able to uh, estimate what not able to guess what your uh, sample space is you will able to you will not able to find the correct probability because in the definitions of probability the sample space come into picture okay that's why it's very much important to you just see whatever the experiment is mentioned in the questions let's see what are the all possible outcomes and those all possible outcomes will be the sample space let's say we are uh, uh, we are uh, tossing a coin sorry uh, throwing a dice okay in the dice you will find six possible outcome okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 but if you are tossing two dice okay so tossing two dice it means the first dice dice can have this number and second dice dice can also have this number so together these will this will uh, uh, represent a sample space of very large size you no know, and this will be you know like the sample space like 1 comma 1 because on first dice it will be one second dice it can also be one or first dice it will be one but second dice it can be two and similarly you will find total uh, 6 into 6 which is 36 total combinations of this three things Uh, these two things okay so this is why uh, whenever uh, you just start uh, you know like uh, adding more experiments so like, like you know like uh, tossing three dice that will be uh, having a number into 6 into 6 into 6 uh, total 216 uh, size of the sample space that's why you need to understand what are the size of your sample space because those things will be coming to the picture of probability and these things this information will be used to calculate the probability so i think uh, you all basically understand what is sample space so i just thought we just to give you a basic intuition and uh, you know like uh, uh, let me just give you some advanced example related to the uh, you know like uh, 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 sample space okay so uh, let's say we are conducting an experiment so here's your experiment and we are tossing a coin c okay we are tossing a coin so the first uh, experiment proceeds like this way you know like you can define any type of experiment in the uh, probability and whatever the experiment we are defining on the basis of that a sample space will be calculated so thing is that the experiment consists of flipping a coin and then flipping it a second time if a head occurs it means you are just flipping a coin so flipping a coin results in two things either it is head or either it is tail 
then it is telling that you are flipping another coin if it's a head okay so flipping it a second time if a head occurs so let's say it's a head then you again flip a coin so uh, obviously the result can be either head or tail but if it's a tail you throw a dice okay and if it's a tail you are throwing a dice and throwing a dice can have six possible outcome one two three four five six so what is the what is the sample space for this whole experiment okay you know in this stage you are having two sub experiment inside a bigger experiment okay and in this case you need to uh, join you need to what you can say collect these two informations so you can see that the sample space has been written, written like this way uh, first one is h h means first one is head second one is also head because you know it's tossing a coin and if it's a head then again tossing a coin so it's telling that the first h is saying that the first experiment resulted into a head and this uh, thing is also there if this also result into head but the second outcome is tail and similarly t1 t2 t3 means the one resulted into tail and the dice resulted into one so these are the all possible outcome at the end of this experiment so let's say uh, at a at random point the person who is conducting the experiment you ask the questions okay what is the output so he may he may tell t4 you should understand that it means um, the first coin resulted into a T, and second coin, uh, so second uh, time the result, uh, dice resulted into a four. He may tell H T. It means first experiment resulted into head, and second ex uh, this second sub experiment resulted into a tail. So these are all the possible, uh, uh, you know, like outcomes is there. Okay. So uh, this is also this is also sample space. So you can just write into the simple thing. I mean, like set H H H T uh, T one. T2 and similarly everything T6. Okay, so this is uh, uh, you know like a, a slightly complicated things related to the sample space because you are just combining two different experiment in this uh, whole experiment. Okay, two different sub experiment. So uh, now these types of questions you know like uh, maybe they are key you just uh, they are just uh, what it was stacking experiment over experiment to just make it com look it look complicated but underlying principle is simple just you need to look at the whatever the all the things are you know like whenever you are tossing two coin h h h t how these results are being uh, retained so this means this first coin resulted into a head and second coin also resulted into a head that's why it's h h okay and similarly this is the with this thing this first thing is showing whatever the result of first coin was and second thing is showing whatever the result of the second coin is okay so this is how you know you can you can actually put this thing into picture okay one more thing uh sample space is the bigger thing you know like uh it may be it is the whole set it is the whole set so it is the whole set but you define an uh, a probability you find a probability based on event so what is the event event is a subset of a sample space okay so let's say you have a sample space of a size uh, let's say one two three so you just define a subset so this is a sample space it is represented by s and define a event so event you know like uh, event can be uh, represented by let's say e and so just a subset subset means any portion of this particular set is called subset so you know like you can see that this one two is actually part of this set so this is called subset so uh, are you guys familiar with the set theory and all you know like a subset union intersection like this type of thing okay so uh, uh, if you just uh, are aware of this concept so you just uh, need to understand that key uh, slightly the concept of set will be um, used here so simply means any set uh, any set uh, if you just take a portion of it you know like uh, this one is also a subset this two is also a subset. Uh, this three is also a subset. So there can be multiple subset. So uh, if a set is of size n, uh, what is the you know like a possible uh, total number of subset? Anyone? Do you know about it? Okay, two raised to n. Right. Okay. So you know like uh, these things. How come? How these things come? Sorry. yeah 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 right so you know like uh, uh, just uh, you know like uh, uh, probability actually you know like in probability you utilize three type of things actually there is set you can utilize permutation combination you also utilize this type of concept sometimes binomial theorem you also utilize and uh, uh, specifically if you are using a random variable then integration and differentiation you also utilize okay so these things all will be used together 
so you can see that here set is uh, being used and to calculate this particular size like how many of these are you know like a subset this thing actually comes into picture using the permutation combinations so you know like uh, if there is n element let's say there is three element in the uh, 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 set so you know like it it may happen that uh, in the subset you are forming one can be there and one cannot be there so for one there is two ways okay it can be there it cannot be there it can be there it cannot be there so two ways for one Similarly, there is two ways for two and two ways for three. In the subset, three can be there, three cannot be there. So total, you know, like there is a multiplication theorem inside this permutation combination. Ki if you have a different number of ways to do some task, you know, like uh, just you are going to some do something and you have four ways to do this thing. Uh, you, you arrive at a point, you again have something and you are having another uh, five ways to do something. And again, you have six ways to do something. So these task can be done by 4 into 5 into 6 so this is called multiplication uh, theorem so here also you know like uh, this number of subset can be uh, 2 into 2 into 2 so if there are three element the 2 to the power 3 so for n elements you can similarly prove that it's a 2 to the power n you know like there, there can be sometimes questions based on the subjective section based on uh, this so that key if you have some n yeah yeah so uh, I was telling that if you have just n number of elements, uh, the, there can be subjective questions based on the thing that this proof that ki there are n number of elements, then the sub size of subset, uh, total number of subset will be two to the power n. But uh, just you just need to know ki how these things are arrived. Okay, so just uh, uh, you can like everything, every formula you can just uh, uh, think from the scratch and you can yeah 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 I am able to hear you. Hello. Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Okay, I think um, network issue is there from my side. Yeah, I think network issue is there from my side. So, uh, just... Uh, okay, so... Okay, so uh, just let me speak slowly and... Uh, so I was telling that um, these things will be there. So uh, if it still breaks, then let me know. You know. Hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello. Actually, you know, there is a, a network issue from my side, so just uh, I cannot do in that anything also. So uh, I was telling uh, the um, so you understand how these things are coming, right? Two to the power n. Okay, so you know, like uh, we actually define, pro yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know, like, uh, uh, so just let me explain from uh, the simple agenda. So, just the thing is that ki, let's say you have in uh, two element in the set, okay, just let's say you have three element in the set A, B, and C, okay. So, whenever you are forming a subset, it means a subset can have one or more elements so it may have you know like a it may have a or b also 
or it may do, it may not have any other element also this empty set is also a part of this subset okay so it means uh, these thing it in the, if you are forming a subset this means a can be there or a cannot be there so for a there is only two choice it can be there it cannot be there in the subset for b also you have two choice it can be there in the subset it cannot be there in the subset and for c you also have two choice it can be there in the subset it cannot be there in the subset so a for a you have two possibilities b you also have two possibilities and c also have two possibilities so i was explaining that in permutation and combination there is a something called multiplication theorem or something called addition theorem there are two parts of theorem addition theorem is there and multiplication theorem so multiplication theorem tells you that if you have some different ways to do something so let's say you have p ways to do some particular task q ways to do uh, some another task after p and r ways to do some another task after r so total number of ways you can perform this whole task is p into q into r so this is how, how this particular thing is there so it means a total number of ways you can form this uh, subset is 2 into 2 into 2 so since there are three elements so it will be 2 to the power 3 but if there are n elements the formula will generalize that 2 to the power n okay is it now clear Okay, so these things are all coming from the PNC permutation combination, and uh, there are a lot of ways, you know, like uh, number of ways to do this, the number of ways to do that, if something conditions, some conditions are put. So those things are important, you know, like a uh, more thinking type of questions are formed which is on the basis of uh, PNC uh, probability because both things are there, and this uh, sort of binomial theorem and set theory will also. So these set permutation combination binomial theorem and uh, this. Uh, probability thing is actually uh, you, go, you can find a lot of questions based on these in your paper also so you know there is something called event and there's something called complement of event okay so the complement event a with respect to is the subset of all element of s that are not in a so if you're just aware about the set theory so there is something called complement of a set so let's say you have a uh, s as uh, i already told you let's say s it, uh, it's about uh, throwing a dice so s will be one two three four five six so this is your sample space and a is you know like a is an event that we are defining so let's say event can be any uh, part of the experiment so let's say we say that okay a is the event that other uh, number will be uh, even number so this will be two four six okay so this is the even number okay if you are talking about a complement so a complement represented by this three symbol okay so a complement means uh, a complement means all those elements that are present in the s but that are not present in the a okay so we can see that um, a complement means uh, all those elements like one is there three is there and five is there so one three five means one three five is there in the s and these are not in the a so this is called a complement or complement of the event okay so we will see like uh, in the respect of probability how we are talking about things so we will see with some example and there is something called intersection of two event so okay let's say we have a two four six and we define another event as uh, one two four okay so in this case the the uh, this particular uh, intersection of event is actually uh, represented by all those elements that are common between those two events so it is represented by the symbol a intersection this this vertical the symbol a intersection b is equal to uh, two comma four because these two elements are common in both the set okay so these are called intersection of two event or intersection of two set actually event is obviously a subset so it's, it's generally a set and when defining intersection of two event it's, you are talking about the intersection of this particular thing okay so whatever the possible outcomes are and there is something called mutually exclusive event so mutually exclusive event means two event a and b are called mutually exclusive if they are disjoint so disjoint means mutually exclusive or disjoint are the same thing if there is no any common element between them so let's say we are defining a as uh, a set of all even numbers when you are throwing a die and let's say we are defining b as something called a uh, set of all odd numbers so it is one three five so when you will take any uh, a intersection b actually there are no any common element okay so there are no any common element so you will be writing this as this particular symbol called phi okay so when you have no any common element between two sets these are called mutually exclusive or disjoint set okay or disjoint event if you are talking about particularly the event so these things are all the name of set complement of a set intersection of two set union of two set but obviously we are just uh, trying to see these things in the probability so we'll, we are talking about the event okay because event is obviously a subset subset of the, the global set or the universal set the sample space so is this thing clear with you all
so if you are defining probability so you know like probability of happening an event because we are talking about the event only so probability of happening of event is actually uh, given by simple formula the number of ways that particular event can happen by total number of outcomes so this is actually called size of sample space size of sample space and this thing number of ways it can happen this is called size of event okay so we will see like uh, what this particular thing means so simply probability of happening of any event is simply whatever the event, uh, uh, event is just find the size of the event like how many events are there in the event and how many total elements are there in the sample space okay so uh, simple thing just let's say you are tossing a coin okay and the coin is tossed two times so if you know like uh, in probability there are two things tossing a coin two times coin two times or is equal to tossing two coins so these things are same thing okay in probability it may return as you are trying you are tossing a coin two times or it may return as tossing a coin uh, tossing two coins simultaneously both are the same thing it may happens it may return as tossing uh, two dice uh, tossing a dice twice or uh, tossing two dice so these two things are similar you hear it in coin is tossed twice or it may return as two coins are tossed simultaneously so both are same thing okay so both are the same thing so first of all to find this probability we need to find the sample space obviously i had explained ki uh, coin is tossed twice so sample space will be h h st uh, th and tt okay so size of sample space which is represented by ns is equal to 4 and the event is what is the event here find the probability that at least one head occurs so okay so event is at least one head so at least one head uh, is the your event and if you just see this particular thing uh, uh, sample space what is this uh, event talking about at least one head means either one head or it can be two head also so one head means uh, head tail tail head sorry head tail uh, tail head and two head means head head okay so these are the all the possible uh, uh, event uh, means uh, the whatever can be in the event head tail tail head and head head here you have one head here you have one head and here you have two head so this particular thing represented by probability of pe which is called probability of event happening is equal to what the size of the event and the num total number of outcome the size of event here is the 3 and total number of outcome is the 4 okay so your probability is 3 by 4 so this is how you arrive at probability just whatever the event is find whatever the what will event is going to be what are the possible uh, subset of the particular set and what are the what and then you have just sample space and just find the number of element you can it is two that and is divided by the corresponding uh, numbers so this is how you actually define the probability so this is fairly simple thing but we just move into the complicated example soon and uh, uh, you know like uh, there is uh, actually some uh, properties related to the probability it's, it's not like we, you just have a uh, this uh, p and p we were just trying to find the probability of simple thing okay so just let me uh, give you some uh, another example so let's say you have a deck of cards so deck of card has 52 cards total and uh, this cards is actually come into four different suit okay so there is called uh, uh, there is diamond and uh, then there is a uh, what is it spade then uh, heart and the other one is club okay so these four things are there and both the things means there are total 13 cards of each and uh, and there are total 52 cards out of which 26 card are red and uh, 26 card are black okay so uh, these two things uh, are means these are the information due to 52 card okay so in the total b2 card there are total 13 different types of card starting from a then 1 2 up to 10 then there is jack then there is queen and then there is king okay so these there are the total uh, uh, uh 13 uh, cards certain types of card uh, and this one is not there a and 2 and uh, every card is of four types okay so every card so let there is a a a is will be four types there is a diamond of a then there is spade of a then there is heart of a then there is club of a okay so these are the all the information related to the particular card so there are total there are 20 uh, 52 cards 26 red 26 black uh, each card uh, is divided into four types diamond spade heart black and that's how we got certain kind of each type okay so there is a question the question is that from a pack of 52 cards 
okay from pack of 52 cards uh, actually three cards are drawn at random you are drawing three cards okay you are drawing three cards find the probability of drawing a king a king uh, a queen and a jack okay so jack is the something you know like a gulam uh, in the hindi people say so uh, uh, so there are three things uh, in the 52 cards take you are just trying to you are just randomly putting uh, pulling three cards so what is the probability that uh, you have uh, three cards uh, and out of those three cards um, instead of uh, pulling the three cards and out of these three cards you have uh, one king one queen and one jack okay so what is this probability okay so you know like uh, first of all you need, really need to find what is your size of sample space okay size of sample space means out of 52 cards out of 52 cards the all the possible combinations of three card okay all the possible combinations of three card will be your sample space okay so if you are just drawing four card it means out of your two cards all the possible combinations of four card will be your sample space okay so size of sample space will be all the possible combinations of three card so which is precisely written as 52 c3 so uh, are you all aware about this particular symbol uh, combinations hello okay so this is the size of sample space 52 c3 and then uh, you are talking about the event so your event is uh, drawing a king a, uh, a queen or a jack so this is a precise statement that you are drawing a queen king queen or jack so where you will uh, to calculate this particular size any we will have some uh, concept from the permutation conventions like there are total four number of cards of king four number of cards of queen and four number of cards from jack so all possible combinations like there is actually four c1 ways you can draw a king four c1 a base you draw a queen and four c1 ways you draw a jack okay and since i told you that you are completing this task this task and this task so means there are means all the tasks are completing simultaneously so a king is also there a queen is also there a jack is also there it's not like a king is there or a queen is there or a jack is there that's a different thing okay so that's why you need to put here the multiplication so total number of probability will be your I mean, so your probability will be n uh, sorry your p will be uh, n e upon n s okay so whatever the calculation comes just to divide those two things and you will get the probability so simple thing always you need to find the size of sample space it may be written in the form of set, simple set that like we saw earlier it may be some complicated com uh, all possible combinations that you need to calculate but the thing is that just you need to be aware of the size of sample space because that will be that will be used in the probability thing okay so is this example clear, clear with you all now uh, since these are the thing that we are talking uh, in terms of a single single event so there is event a there is event a, and we define something and then we are trying to find out the probability it may happen that in general you have more than one event it may, it may happen that you are just having two event or you are having three event so how those things come into picture so let's say you are having two event a b and you are uh, 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 you are just trying to find what is the probability of a union b okay so you know like someone may ask you why 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 this particular thing is important so let's say a is a uh, uh, means just we are still talking about this dice one two three four five six okay and uh, a is the event of having a event number two four six and b is the event of having a number greater than four which is five six okay so we may we are interested in what is the probability of a union b so you know like when you will see this venn diagram you will find that uh, a union b means is, let's say this is a and this is b and this is particularly your whole set whole sample space so a union b means all the elements that are in a and all the elements that are in b so you are talking about the elements that are in A and that is that are not in the B and also the elements that are in B but that are not in A and also we are talking about this particular uh, this uh, common element okay so this particular thing uh, this particular thing uh, A union B is represented by means this probability is given by probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B so you know like if the intuition we talked about okay, how this probability is coming into the picture how this formula is coming into the picture the simple thing is there so let's say this is A and B okay so this particular whole portion is a okay so you are trying to find a probability of a this portion is obviously included 
we were trying to find a probability of these forces again included so this particular thing is getting included two times that's why we are just one times we are min uh, we are putting a minus sign before that particular thing okay so it, it's not the exact proof proof is something else but it is the basic intuition you can understand how these things are happening and if you just forget a formula you can write in your own terms and simply you can define it for three event also if you are having three event a union b union c so let's say we are just again define three c, c which is a number less than four which is one two and three okay and we are trying to find out what is the probability of a union b union c so this which particular formula uh, probability of a uh, plus b plus c then this particular thing is minus and then this particular thing is plus so there is a actually very generalized formula for this thing so uh, uh, I don't think those formula is coming into the your uh, exam because these are fairly calculative questions that you have in your uh, examinations. So overall, the thing is that something uh, means you know like uh, the single single events in plus, then the intersection of all those events in the minus, and then again, so you know like it's like a, a alternate sign. So this thing can be written as uh, sigma probability of AI, uh, then uh, minus uh, sigma probability of AI intersection AJ. Okay. So these things are actually you know, like advanced concept then plus uh, sigma probability of AI intersection AJ intersection AK. So these things are not in the picture, but you can just generalize this particular formula. So let's see the example like how we can do this. So this thing is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So to find A B, uh, this particular thing, you just first need to find what is the probability of A intersection B. Okay, so A intersection B means take the intersection of this two set and find its probability. So A intersection B means this particular six is only the common element. Okay, so there is only one element inside the B intersection B. So this particular probability will be one by six. Okay, then probability of A union will be given by probability of A. So probability of A means three by six, and probability of B means two by six, and uh, uh, this probability of A intersection B is one by six. Okay, so the overall result will be. Uh, 4 by 6, okay, which is 2 by 3. So this is how we find the probability of two events, union of two events. Okay. So obviously here you are just uh, looking at some, you know, like a, some particular thing which which can be represented in the set form. It may happen that something cannot be represented in the set form. You may need to be combination or combination. So those type of things can be there in the uh, concept also. Okay. So we will see some uh, examples based on that also. So we don't need to worry about it. So is this thing clear with you all? Okay, so one uh, fairly simple example is that we, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, there is a uh, probability question. Uh, the probability that an American industry will locate to Shanghai is China is uh, 0.7, so probability that it will locate to China is 0.7, just very well ending the form. Uh, it will relocate to Beijing is uh, 0.4, so you know, like this is Shanghai, so you can it by S, and this is Beijing, so you can it by P, uh, 0.4, and probability that it will locate to either Shanghai or Beijing. Either means, you know, like whenever the <coughs> its concept uh, is about either, you just you have to understand it's a union thing that we are talking about, union, okay. Either means either Shanghai or Beijing, it means either S union B, which is equal to 0 0.8, okay. So, you know, like it's written that is either Shanghai or Beijing or both. It means either Shanghai or Beijing or it can be both. So, this is the union thing that we are talking about, okay. That's why we written union. So, what it's asking is what is the probability that industry will relocate to both the cities, okay. It's talking about what's the probability that industry will locate to both the cities. It means we are talking about probability of S, S intersection B. Okay. So just you need to use the formula at a particular thing, which is equal to probability of A, uh, sorry, probability of S plus probability of B minus probability of S intersection B. And just you put this, plug these all values and just uh, find this particular value by just uh, transferring the things here, here and there. Things that the asking the probability that it will relocate to neither cities means nor S nor B. So it means it will neither be into the S and neither will be into the B. So this th complicated thing can be represented into the, this way. So you know, like uh, this particular thing uh, actually represented into the if you just familiar about the set, it represented about the, this way, and this particular thing is actually represented about one minus P of S union B. So you know, like uh, this changing this particular thing into this way, it's actually name of a theorem. Do you all recall it particular theorem? 
in set theory in set theory is uh, something called a union b intersection is equal to a intersection sorry a complete intersection b right anyone yeah 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 so you know like uh, this same thing the same thing is translated into this way and this same thing just we are talking about the state thing you okay, know and just same way so you know this probability na no? what is this 0.8 so just easily find out this probability which is 0.2 okay so uh, obviously uh, concept from set and permutation combination will be there so mastering those things will also lead you to do the probability simply okay so uh, after the simple probability so you know like to practice the probability the rd sarma book that i prescribed you so those particular thing actually contains good questions uh, from the classical probability especially you know like uh, this type of probability conditional probability based theorem and all those things and multiplication theorem is also there so you can obviously go and uh, see that book like uh, uh, how the questions are and actually i can do a lot of questions in the practice also but things that just uh, understand how the things are working and just do some questions from the book and it will give you a good practice thing okay so uh, this is the objective mathematics that i'm talking about so it's for j level uh, thing uh, so you can do that okay so there is something called conditional probability and conditional probability along with the uh, you know like uh, this particular thing conditional probability uh, multiplication theorem bayes theorem so these are the important thing so uh, let's just talk about the conditional probability so conditional probability means uh, you are trying to find the probability of an event given that another event has already happened okay so it's represented by probability of b given a so it's read as probability of b given so it's a vertical bar uh, probability of b given a and it means uh, a event has already happened then what is the probability of occurring of b okay so this particular thing the probability of b given a is represented by the formula of probability of a intersection b probability of a divided by probability of a so this is given by this particular formula so it means what is the probability of happening of b when a has already happened okay what is the probability of happening of b when a has already happened it means uh, its formula is given by probability of a intersection b upon probability of a so it's a definition it's a pure definition it's nothing like i have defined the formula so this is a definition of conditional probability the simple thing what is the probability of being a b when a is already happened now at this point of time uh, let's just uh, say, uh, see the another example so let's say just wait uh, again talking about the uh, dice thing and b is event obviously the same event 2 4 6 uh, even number and uh, a is the some other event so let's say we define a as uh, 1 2 3 okay so let's say they are asking about if a has already happened then what is the probability of happening of b So we have to find probability of happening of B when A has already happened. So first you need to find the probability of A intersection B. So for that A intersection B means A intersection B means uh, this uh, two and four are common thing two and four. So it will be two by six and probability of happening of A is uh, four by six. Okay. So this particular uh, thing will be two by four, which is one by two. So this is the required probability. but obviously these things are just we are talking about in terms of a set but uh, these things will come into some complicated form also but the overall idea is to do this particular thing okay now uh, from the conditional probability thing we can actually derive a uh, uh, formula of uh, you know like uh, something called independent events okay independent event so two event a and b are called independent you know like independent means occurring of a does not have any effect on b so you know like uh, this particular thing probability of b given a it means what is the probability of happening of b when a has already happened so it means a and b have some effect it may happen that a has happened and b is happening that's why this particular event and that is being captured by this particular thing you can see that if there is some common element between a and b so if a and uh, and a intersection b is there so this means uh, this particular thing is getting transferred into whatever the, the elements are common in b is also in there is some some element in a and that's why this particular effect is occurring so probability of b is different from probability of a so if you can here find that probability of b is 3 by 6 uh, which is uh, precisely 1 by 2 and probability of uh, b given a is also uh, 1 by 2 so it means if you have some uh, probability Uh, probability of b given a is equal to probability of b. It means you have independent event. It can I come up with what? That 
probability of happening of b when a has already happened does not depend on a when it will happen when we will find this both the probability and we will have the same number okay so let's say uh, uh, let's give you the another example so let's say you are trying to find the probability of a into a and b okay and it is 3 by 4 and but probability of a itself can be some other number it may be uh, 1 by 2 so in that case these two probability are not the same okay these are not the same that's why this is not the case of independent event so independent event means there is no any conditions conditions are not true the conditions are not met so that's why uh, you can just understand the independent event the probability of happening of a does not depend on b that's why this both the probability will be same when you calculate this probability using the particular formula and when you will calculate the probability of a independently you will just having the same number okay so but you know like uh, here you can see that probability of happening of uh, b given a is 1 by 2 and probability of b is also 1 by 2 so you can say that uh, b is independent of a so a and b are two independent events here okay so it a and in, a b uh, to be independent it does not mean ki a intersection b should be 5 so that's not the case okay so this is not a correct thing a intersection b is not having any common element then they are both the independent events so that's not a true the simple formula a, the on the basis of which you have to judge is the simple thing probability of b given a is equal to probability of b or probability of a given b is equal to probability of a so any conditions meant you can say that a and b are independent event this is not event so this is not the correct criteria to judge whether it's a, a independent event or not okay anyone any problem Guys, any questions you have? Okay, so from here you can see that probability of A and intersection B can be written as a product of these two things. So, probability of B given A and probability of A. So, let's say you have uh, A and B as the independent event. Then, probability of B given A will be the probability of B. So in that case, this particular thing will be probability of B into probability of A. So this is also the definitions of independent event. The probability of A intersection B will be probability of A into probability of B. Okay. So this thing is also there. So whenever you are trying to find some um, uh, probability in the questions and you find that A and B are the independent event. So in that case, you can directly use the formula to find if you are trying to find a probability of A intersection B, you can directly use the formula to find probability of b into probability of a so this is coming from the same thing that probability of b given a is the probability of b so these things uh, a intersection b can be presented as the product of this two okay so this uh, formula is also important and this will be getting used uh, in the questions when you're trying to solve it guys any questions Okay, so these are some uh, uh, complicated questions based on the probability, but uh, you know, like uh, uh, this thing you can solve, and uh, but this thing, this questions we will see later when we will have some experience with the problem solving. Okay, so we will see this thing later also, and uh, uh, if you are having R D Sharma, then that's good. If you don't have this particular book, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gupta Kapoor is also a good book, and uh, you can also. Uh, solve questions from that particular book also it, it contains questions from probability and uh, for random variables and other part also it's enough you know, so that's why uh, this book you can follow or rd sarma probability you can also follow okay so uh, uh, you can practice questions based on that so just you know like uh, just i already told you tell, tell, just try to practice some simple questions and then try to focus on advanced questions based on that so just to understand how to apply the uh, this uh, particularly or uh, this uh, independent conditional probability and all those things that we have discussed earlier okay so based on that uh, we just uh, are trying to discuss uh, some complicated thing which is called product or the multiplicative rule so i already told key if you have probability of a intersection b you know so these thing can be represented as so this same thing is coming from this particular formula probability of b given a is equal to probability of a intersection b uh, divided by probability of a okay so the thing is that uh, the thing is that we, you just need to send it here and you can just find a, uh, 
formula of probability of a intersection b which is equal to probability of a into probability of b given a okay so let's say you are uh, you are uh, um, just uh, you know like uh, some examples you just want to see uh, like how you can use this thing in the real world so you know like multiplicative theorem how you can use this particular thing in the real world okay so uh, some questions can be like let me just think some questions for you okay so it may happen that somewhere it is given that uh, there are two event a and b okay and uh, okay so these things can be okay just i will just um, find some questions based on this particular thing and i will just um, get back to you so because you know like uh, this particular thing is actually to uh, uh, important to discuss so just today let us discuss the theory about behind it and then we will discuss the questions tomorrow so i told you if uh, this particular thing both a and b are independent then probability of b given a can be represented as probability of b because this is a precisely definition of independent event in that case probability of a intersection b changes to probability of a into probability of b okay so this particular thing is uh, are there okay so uh, uh, this particular thing like uh, how to uh, uh, solve questions based on that you can just uh, think it this way uh, so let's say you have uh, you have a device you have two engine okay you have two engine so probability of probability that engine e1 so there is a system there is a system and there is particularly two engine okay e1 and e2 okay so engine e1 and e2 this particular system will only work when e1 engine e1 will work and engine e2 will also work so this two particular system work then only the engine will, uh, this particular system will work so overall there is two engine e1 and e2 Pro probability that engine e1 will work is 0.7 and probability that engine e2 will work is equal to uh, 0.3 okay so what is the probability that this particular system will work okay so the question is there is two engine in the system the probability of happening of an in this probability of working of engine e1 is 0.7 probability of working of engine e2 is 0.3 then what is the probability that whole system will work on a particular day so uh, it, does anyone have any idea like how we can solve this particular question anyone or do you get the questions correctly like what i'm telling what Uh, probability of okay so uh, i told ki this engine will work only when both the system will work so even in an e2 means either even works either e2 works or both the works yeah so that's why we need to find a probability of yeah yeah that's right so you know like uh, why this e1 union e2 is not there because you know it precisely it's saying that ki both the systems should work so it it may have told that if either of the system work either if either of the system work then the if either of this engine work then the system work that's how when you can use the e1 union e2 if it's telling both the systems should work so it means you are talking about probability of happening of event e1 and event e2 simultaneously which is intersection and you know like since working of engine does not depend on working of engine 2 so you know like uh, 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 yeah, means independently we can think of that we are just not trying to uh, uh, prove this independency by uh, this particular definition of event so you know like it, it is generally true like if there is two engine engine e1 and e2 so working of engine 1 is independent of working of engine 2 it's true in the general life you know like some people may, some people say that i may be biased because it may happen that there is some some particular thing that is being uh, derived from engine one then it goes to engine two that's how engine one two works but i'm especially saying here that the engine e1 and e2 are means a uh, different entity these are not independent these are not dependent on each other 
and the system only works when engine E1 also works, engine E2 also works. So you know it's, it may be like this way. Uh, you know, like in a, in a electricity, you have some uh, particularly uh, this uh, combinations called parallel combination and series combinations. So uh, I don't recall a lot of things, but uh, uh, I think in series combinations, uh, something called something like this is there, right? And uh, right, and uh, this particular thing will work only when this thing also works, and this thing also then the electricity will pass this way. Okay, so you can think the system like this way. So in that particular case, we know that both the system are independent. So the probability is simply e1 and into probability of e2. And uh, thus we will have 0 0.7 into 0 0.3, which is equal to 0 0.21. Okay. So uh, uh, this type of questions can be there in the. Uh, so there will there are a lot of questions. I will just you know like uh, especially in the last next class I will just come with the four to five different questions and on this particular topic I will discuss those things. Okay. So for the here you can just see that the probability of happening of A intersection B is given by this formula. But in general, it's true. You know, like if you're just trying to find out k different event and you're trying to find out the intersection of k different event. So it means it means uh, uh, probability of it's 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 simply understood as this way. Probability of happening of A1. First you need to find to find the probability of happening of A1, then probability of happening of A2 when A1 has already happened. Then probability of happening of A3 when A1 intersection A2 is already happened, and similarly we need to proceed this way. Okay, so uh, this is the you know like whole idea about the intersection event. Okay, let me just discuss another example that came coming to my mind uh, now. So this is not an example. So you know like uh, uh, there is a game. Okay, so there is a game, and uh, two people are playing a game. Okay, there is a A and there is B. Okay, so the game is of tossing a coin. Okay, the game is of tossing a coin. So tossing a coin means if a head occurs, if a head occurs, A win. If a tail occurs, B win. Okay, and game is transferable. So let's say it starts with A. I am giving example. A throw a coin and it's a tail. Okay, then it is it, the chance goes to B on next. So let's say B also toss the coin and it's the tail. Then B win. If it beats, it's not the tail. If it's a head. Then chance again goes to A because A has lost and chance is again to A. So similarly, this will continue till till the infinity, means till when A wins or till either B wins. So what is the probability that A will win if A start the game? So the question is, uh, question is like this way: uh, the game is there and we need to find the probability that A will win uh, if a starts the game okay simple thing there is a game a and b are playing uh, it's a tossing a coin okay tossing a coin simple thing is that either means obviously the game will be started by either a or b so let's say a start the game so what is the probability that a will win if a start the game okay and a only wins if there is a head in the coin and b wins when there is a tail in the coin okay so, uh, do you have any idea about like how to solve this type of question? Anyone? Okay, so it's true that we have to think uh, means we have to think about a lot of probabilities there. So you know, like let's see how we can uh, dis uh, discuss it. Okay, so let's say if probability of uh, winning of A is given by A and probability of winning of B is given by B. So we need to find the probability that A wins. Okay, if A is starting the game. So uh, obviously, first we need to the probability of head is. 1 by 2 and probability of tail is also 1 by 2. Okay, so these things are known to us in prior. So let's say A uh, A just uh, plays the game. So it may happen that it's a head only. Okay, so it's a head. Okay, if a heads, it will win. If it's not head, it will uh, lose the game. Okay, so there are two possible ways. At any point of time, there are two possible ways. Either a head wins or either there is no head. So if it's a head, if it's a head, then probability of head. If it's a not head, then it will be probability of uh, tail. Uh, so you know, like uh, let me just write in the simple thing. I'm confusing you so much. So one minute.
okay so uh, probability of a means either a means or probability that b uh, uh, okay so this means either a means uh, means there is a head in the uh, uh, coin or the second thing can be that a does not mean then b uh, b uh, throw the coin and b also does not mean okay so uh, you know like i'm just uh, forgetting the uh, notation here but the simple thing is that uh, either it's head plus uh, it's a tail for uh, tail for a it's also a tail for uh, head for b and then it's a tail for uh, uh, head for b a okay overall i want to say that he, let's say a start the game a lose the first chance then the chance goes to b b also lose the, their chance then again chance come to a and I, again uh, a uh, throws the head so that's how we are uh, talking about so in the third chance it may happens that uh, so let's say just repeat uh, this one by two so this is by one by two into uh, one by two k square it means it means just say this particular thing this ht represented by ki, um, a throws the a throws the coin and it's a tail okay a the coin feka it's a tail so a, a lose the chance b chance goes to b b again throws the coin then obviously we're talking about a wins so b have to lose so b the chance of b loses head so a, a b uh, throws the coin it's a head and then again a throw the coins because obviously chance will go again to a and it's a head that's how this particular thing we are talking about one by two into one by two and this particular thing is one by two again the chance can be h st uh, st okay how this thing is there first chance a lose b also lose again uh, a lose b also lose then again a wins so this means one by two into one by two to the power four and so this thing goes on so you can see that this particular thing is actually uh, uh, just you can take one by two common and this particular thing is one plus one by two square uh, plus one by two to the power four dot 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 and this is a, a geometric series okay so geometric uh, infinite geometric where r is r is less than one so this particular thing is uh, this particular formula is to find this particular thing is uh, is equal to one by two uh, and it is a by one minus r okay so a is first term so it is one by two uh, one by one minus one by two okay so this particular thing is one by two and uh, one by uh, what you can say this uh, one by two okay so this particular thing translates to uh, uh, one minute. Okay, so this particular thing is one by two square, right? And uh, one by two, and uh, this particular thing is uh, uh, what you can say. This uh, one by four means or uh, three by four means, yeah, four by three means. This thing reverses into, and this particular thing is uh, two by three. Okay, so probability of a wins when a start the game is uh, two by three. So you know, like uh, I may not have been very clear with the intuition. The simple thing is that. Uh, when a start the game the way start the game so if a wins in the first chance then it's there but it may happen that a does not win the first chance and the, we are finding the probability that a wins so what it will go b have to lose in the second chance and then a again have to throw head so that he can win so let's say uh, this happened but if it's not happened then again a let's say a again lose so b will have to lose again and then a will win again and this thing continue till the eternity till the forever so we can just you know like uh, obviously calculate this probability in a single thing and just we get the probability two by three so when you are playing some game like this let's say you and i are playing and just chance is that i am taking the chance to start the game so my winning my chance of winning is higher than the you because i have a 66 percent chance that i will win but if you will start you will have the 66 percent chance that almost you will win okay so uh almost 66 percent you will win so this is how you know like uh, things are there in the probability you just if you just you start the game you will have some advantage over me so guys means i was not able to exactly write this thing but i think you are the you can understand like what i'm talking about right is it clear with everyone Yeah. Okay, so this particularly uh, question is the same thing, the Indian questions that I talked about. So you can just see this question by yourself and uh, nothing much fancy things there. Just yes, uh, this particular thing uh, is there. 
okay so you know like with the independent of event there is particular theorem that i recall yeah that if uh, a and b are independent okay so probability of a intersection b is equal to uh, probability of a into probability of b so this thing is there when a and b are the independent event so uh, this thing actually uh, can be generalized in terms of uh, the other thing also so just uh, So, you know like uh, uh, it may happens that ki, uh, uh, some some things are required so uh, you know like uh, it means that probability of a uh, so this th thing says that if a and b are in, uh, independent event then a complement and b complement are also independent event a and b complement are also independent event and a complement and b are also independent event so if a and b are independent these all are independent okay so uh, i think this is the formula because i don't recall correctly but i think this is the formula if a and b are uh, independent event these all are the independent event and this is how it is being used you know like it's written at a and b are independent event so we are uh, we, we need to find something where we need to find this particular thing a complement intersection b complement so since a and b are independent then these two are also independent and uh, since probability is given so just how we find it okay so these uh, theorems are also there okay so let's at the end just discuss this particular questions from the the semi questions but that we i saw and i just try to try to include it okay so the question says ki a and b are event such that uh one minute a and b are event such that probability of a is equal to 0.4 uh probability of b is equal to uh, 0.5 and probability of a union b is equal to 0.7 okay so these things are given which of the following are true okay so which of the following are true it's asking okay so there are four statement and it may be multiple correct question multiple correct question multiple correct questions not a multiple choice question multiple correct questions so we have to uh, check the each and every option so a and b are mutually exclusive when a and b are mutually exclusive when probability of a intersection b is equal to 5 means this will be equal to 0 because a intersection b is 5 the probability of a intersection b is 0 so obviously using this formula you can find the probability of a intersection b okay so which is uh means the probability of a and b is 0.7 is equal to 0.4 plus 0.5 minus this particular thing so this particular thing will be coming into uh like a 4 0.2 okay so 0.2 obviously this is not a uh, exclusive event because it would have, would have been zero and since it would have been zero we have concluded that a intersection b uh, don't have any element in common okay so this is not the correct statement uh, next a and b are independent so a and b are independent means probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of a into probability of b okay so probability of a intersection b is 0 0.2 okay so right and probability of a into probability of b is uh, 0 0.4 into 0 0.5 which is equal to 0 0.20 okay so both the probability are equal so this option is correct and we are independent event obviously uh second thing is probability of a there is some symbol i think it's a zor symbol i think and 0 0.1 so this particular thing is given that to calculate this particular thing you need to consider this way okay so it is talking about probability of uh a uh this particular thing is means a complement intersection b union a intersection b complement okay so how we are going to calculate this particular thing okay so just you know like we when we see the Venn diagram i think we will have better idea what is talking about so this is a and this is b so this particular thing means yeah 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 definitely yeah yeah that this this yeah this way you can also calculate right right yeah this way you can also calculate so uh uh just uh find this thing also and you can all also find this particular thing okay so uh this thing i all also told you this is a probability of yeah again again it's a d morgan of application okay and you can just translate into probability of uh a intersection b a complement right and you can just find into one minus probability of a intersection b right 
yeah so yeah it will be 1 minus 0 0.2 it's 0 0.8 so this is also correct so just you need to find if this is correct or not and you can do this by this using this calculation so you know like a uh, uh, simple uh, concepts are being utilized here the concept of uh, independence the concept of union and if there is some advanced concept that you don't, don't know they will provide the formula because you know they don't want to check your memory they want to check your uh, skills and you know like especially if you have multiple correct questions just try to check the every answer because there are only a few multiple grade questions and just don't think that if any statement is true just because it's picked it and just uh, remove with the rest so it's not written here that it's a multiple grade questions in the beginning instructions are given that some questions may multiple correct and some questions cannot be so there are no any separate section for multiple correct separate section for single correct everything will be mixed and upon your intuition you have to think that which one is the multiple correct and which of the options are correct uh, so this is the way you need to proceed. So uh, I think this uh, uh, lecture we discussed a lot of things related to conditional probability and all the things. We'll again come with examples tomorrow with some probability and uh, we in the uh, next lecture we'll come with the total probability and uh, this Bayes theorem. Okay. So Bayes theorem and then from the next to next class we'll be talking about random variable and its properties and then some standard distribution. So this will take one more class and this thing will uh, complete in the four classes itself along with the questions. So you know like a standard distribution are there like normal, uh, binomial, poison and all those things, gamma, beta, I also saw the questions. But the thing is that you don't need to study these things in very advanced level because simply PDF or PMF will be utilized to calculate some function, uh, calculate some uh, value that will be given and at the more if something more is given. Uh, it can be you know like uh, uh, it can be like uh, uh, some expectations you need to find so we'll see this how to find expectations how to find the variance how to find human generating function so we'll see this thing but it's not like you will be going into much detail because the, those things are not asked in the advanced level and you know like this particular these things are of uh, if you want to discuss this thing this can be extended to five classes ten classes twenty classes because uh, at uh, BHU when I was doing my graduation, we had this particular whole things in just one se for one semester, for one whole semester, five month course. So we'll just touching all those topics from where you can solve the questions like this, you solve these questions. And similarly, if you find some uh, similar questions related to probability, you can now solve it. You know, like it's just the basic concept that I'm utilizing here. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, we can uh, end today's class. Yeah.